is Guardian Radio 96.9 FM. Fresh news, smart talk, all day. The views and opinions of the hosts and guests are their own and do not necessarily reflect the position of the management and staff of Guardian Networks. Heart Grant is brought to you by Alive, Baja Retreat and Yes Spices, Commonwealth Bank, J.S. Johnson, Ross Electric Motors, and Wendy's. The aftermath of every social revolution brings about change. Cultural norms and landmarks shift as our minds and hearts expand beyond the familiar. To everything, there is a season and a time to every purpose in the land of the living. This is our time to renew, revive, and restore the hope lost to the busyness of life. This is our time to dig again and rebuild from the storms of our past on a solid footing that holds. Welcome to the foundation. The foundation. Foundation. Excuse me for me to take you up, Sean. Will you come and look with my mind to say, this coming Friday, I'm a police going to open up the lawn. You went to see my number one town round town. I did so Friday evening. Boom! The people just tired of working. But I found out, Lord, them here did this complaint. Boom! It made them feel like dancing. Ain't no summer set. Great time with the great time with the disco operator. Five double eighteen and a six tweeter. I did so did the top tweeter. See Lord him just that up with the echo chamber. But watch your man. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. This is Howard Grant right here with the foundation only on 96.9 FM radio. It is a Friday evening. Bam! Warm and easy selected. You know, we laid back and trying to kind of chop it down. Um, uh, we had great conversations this week. Talk to me. We had good talks. We, we uh, sort of got into a good deal of things uh, this week. And um, I had this... Can I do this? Let's just do this, okay? I had a call, right? Um, there was significant provocation on Tuesday's show uh, that led a few persons to call me. One person in particular, extremely prominent, but his approach was sharp, and I liked it, right? I, I want to know why. So I got a call right after the show on, on Wednesday. You know, we had the, um, um, the, the show that we really want to be able to have a panel discussion and we talked about the inner city. Uh, Rubia and Darling, uh, Cooper Darling, was absolutely magnanimous in a particular capacity. Uh, she brought history, she brought passion, she brought insight, and really gave, put flesh to the silhouette, the idea, the concept that existed about this, the past, right? And that's what the show is really about. How could really, we really put flesh to these things? How can we remind persons of where we are? How can we remind persons of where we were, where we are, and where we need to move towards? So Tuesday's show was magnanimous. I enjoyed it. I mean, wholeheartedly. I enjoyed it, right, thoroughly. Uh, I probably said, but six words, really trying to be able to get a good grasp. And it kept playing in my mind for the entire time. And then become Wednesday. We had Valentino, Scrooge Brown, um, um, you know Scrooge, right? And we also had Richard Cartwright being able to join in, the, uh, join in on the discussion about uh, the inner city, the vision for the inner city, and where things are going from there. Uh, it was a very provocative conversation, a conversation that seek to find out where the genesis of the tribulation that we suffer existed. And that genesis for many, because identifying the community, identifying that there were tribulation, even Mrs. Cooper Darling would take talk about the fact that yeah, we would hear about some fights back then, right? And, you know, the fellas had grabbed the ice pick, which was the coolest, the, the closest thing. We didn't see any murders. We didn't see any, like, significant murders that we're seeing now. Bam. We come to Wednesday. And Wednesday's discussion, like I said, provocative to the point where we identified that genesis. And the genesis was the introduction, based upon what my guest has said, of cocaine to those environments, crack cocaine, late 70s. Scrooge took on a position to talk to us about the fact that, hey, listen to me, let's just be very clear. 
I'm a result of a crack baby myself. Blew my mind. I said, what, Scrooge? You look so good. Right? <laughs> Thank you, my brother. All right. I said, what, Scrooge? You look so good. Great conversation. But we found that Genesis, based upon um, uh, the cross-sections of the two that existed here that, that spoke in this particular space, and the Genesis was the introduction of um, substance abuse or the abuse of substance, mainly crack cocaine and alcohol. Now, we still haven't kicked the habit of alcohol. And in fact, if you read the article today, guys, please pick up your newspaper. Please, please, por favor, get yourself a newspaper today. The Guardian News has some information in there. I know you want to read all about the information chief, Blast, Pintard, and Pintard have to backpedal on some stuff. We're going to talk about this today. The lines are wide open. I want you to give me a call. Today is Friday. It's your day. It's our day. So just give me a call if you want to be a part of the conversation, 323-6232-325-4316-325-4259, or hit me up on the, uh, the text line, 422-4796, 422 um, So now I just want to be very clear about these things. In finding that Genesis, something that continues to stay with me as a result of that conversation, when Richard said that the introduction of crack cocaine into our environment caused all those in authority to retreat into themselves, he was more specific and saying that the church fell into their four walls blew my mind. Because we could feel it. Talk to me. We could feel it. We could feel it. Are we talking? Are we talking? Or are we joking today? Are we talking? It's a casual day. We laid back and having a good time. I got my little tropical shirt on today. But nonetheless, we're going to have to have a, a conversation that's sober. Now, whilst we may not necessarily put statistical data and information to that, that data that exists within us, understanding that at one point we recognized that there was a flock of people. We call the congregation a flock. The flock existed, whether that was street meetings on the outside, whether that was evangelism, whether that people was coming from um, Berry Islands down to Acklands to be able to evangelize to those persons. And there was inter-travel throughout the islands. And if you anything like us at 8 Mile Rock, we saw a great deal of Caucasians coming down in the summertime, sleeping outside and coming throughout the communities and being able to spread the love of Christ. Talk to me. How are we talking? But as things changed over the years, there was a backpedaling, this sort of rejection. Hey, listen, the fellas on dope, they on dope, they on that thing, they on that. My father-in-law said, grass, he's from Harbor Island. They on grass, they on that this, right? And there was sort of a white flag waved and many in the church and I, we have to say the church because they were the forerunners of morality in our community at the time. They were the forerunners. This is before we knew, um, um, early 80s when we started to learn about uh, the Rasta. It was the early 80s when we started to see this concept of principle and Selassie I and so forth and so on coming into. Before that, the foundation was Christianity. We can go far back as the nuns. That still is give you all tart on Nassau Street. Talk to me. Let's just be very clear. We can go far about the construction of these things and moving out through the islands. We could go far that the principle, the moral rule that existed in our islands was the church. The introduction of drugs caused them to retreat. I got a call Wednesday after the show. Well, how would I didn't like that show? Well, what happened is that Ali called me. Ali said, Howard, what you was talking about? I just came out. I said, what happened, Ali? Man? <laughs> I said, what happened, Ali? Ali said, man, I just get a call. This was like three. I'm already getting the kids. It's almost four o'clock. Right? I said, man, I just get a call, man. The bishop called me. I said, who bishop? Right? I was, you know, I know all the, all the bishops. He said, no, Bishop Simeon Hall. So I called Bishop Simeon Hall, and he was very straight. He said, Howard, I listened to the other day, and I, I enjoyed that choice. Oh, this is a good show. He said, but I have to say to you that your guest today, which is Wednesday, 
were not accurate in their position. He said they did not provide statistical data and information to indicate that the church has retreated in any way. I say, okay. He said, Howard, there are 4,000 churches throughout this country. I know. I was the head of the Christian Council. I said, okay. He said, when you're speaking like this, it is important that you know the the statistical data and information that exist. And he's just started to run some numbers by me. So it's it's impossible to say that the church retreated. I said, okay. I said, I think the show was successful in its intent. The intent was provocation for activation or activism in one sense or the other. And if we've provoked you to make this call, then we could extend the conversation. I think that's important. I think now we can engage you who has the history in your chest to have a conversation with us about the Genesis and why there seems to be a gulf between the community and the quote-unquote church. Why? Why is there this sentiment that exists that says, my all these church fellows want his money. He said, how would I be more than happy to engage you? February 20, let me look at my phone. I have two persons booked for that week. This is on uh, February 27th. We're going to have Reverend Dr. uh, Randolph Patterson uh, come and sit with us. That's going to be the Monday. And on that Tuesday, we're going to have Bishop Simeon Hall. He's going to be sitting with us on that Tuesday, right? On that Wednesday, for now, we have that, uh, on uh, Wednesday, March 1st, we have booked um, Odaz Benaby Lightborn. She's going to be sitting with us, or Lightborn Benaby. She's going to be sitting with us. You know Dazzy, that's my girl. So she's going to be coming with us on uh, March 1st. That's how we uh, actually have it identified to do those things. So we booked those spots. So the provocation was just that the church has not retreated. But, you know, it's going to be a, a good conversation because... All I can do is grab information between there and the now. And a part of the information is going to be what's in the papers today. Today in the newspapers, if you pick it up, make sure you check it out. Uh, first thing you're going to see is information chief blast, uh, Pintard, FNM leader, uh, I misspoke, uh, which is telling, right? You know, which is it's just it's a telling thing. You're... Um, the sort of theatrics associated with the presentation of what needs to happen whilst there may be an agreement, agreeance with the message, uh, the theatrics associated with it was for some was indifferent. And now we're seeing um, a chief information officer being able to take on a position and say, it don't go so. You never called me, you never said nothing to me. And if you'd done that, you would know that my responsibility is not to answer any of these questions, but to prepare. It's right in the story. You guys read the story. But more specifically, I wanted to talk about this. Bahamas is eighth on regional murder chart. Bananas. The Bahamas ranked eighth in the Inside Crimes 2022 Homicide Roundup for the countries across the Latin America and the Caribbean. Though a few countries, including Haiti, were not ranked because there was no reliable data on the number of homicides last year, how there could be any data? This is heavy. Can't be no data. They've been fighting ever since. They've been fighting far too long. Can't get in there to get no data. The Bahamas finished uh, finished 2022 with 128 murders. That's 32 per 100,000 people. Turks and Caicos, TCI, which had 77.6 murders per 100,000 people, top the list. Turks and Caicos uh, is at the top of the list per capita now. Per capita. Per capita. That means the distance between people, the size of your island and your population per capita. TCI, Turks and Caicos, killing like everybody. You all need to stop. They have less than 45,000 people there. And you're killing 77.6 murders per 100,000 people. This is bananas. For the first time in three years, Jamaica did not have the most murders per capita. Jamaica's uh, constabulary force, the JCF, 
they recorded 148, 140, 1,498 murders, I'm sorry. 1,498 murders in 2002. 24 murders. 24 more murders than the previous year. This puts Jamaica's homicide rate at nearly 53 per 100,000. A height not seen since 2017. Now, this was heavy. I read the entire article. Please go and pick up the article. And you can also go online and check out Insight, um, uh, Insight's crime report. It's right there. You can just pick it up. You can read it just like that. But what it's telling in this article is a few things. There is most definitely a blame. Right? I, I highlighted this area, and I thought it was important that we can be able to talk about this. Guys, the lines are wide open if you want to be a part of the conversation. It says, countries across Latin America and the Caribbean continue to experience high murder rates in 2022. As cocaine production reached new heights, blew my mind. I thought people stopped using coke. I mean, <laughs> it's just, is it just me? I thought it was like, you know, I thought you guys moved up and, and moved on. You still out here doing, this is crazy. So I'm reading the report, right? It says, as co cocaine production reached new heights and the fragmentation of gangs continued and the flow of weapons across the region grew more acute. Speaking of the 128 murders that occurred in the Bahamas, the report said that the war was far higher than the target set for the Bahamas' commissioner set out by the Bahamas' commissioner of police, Clayton Fernando, who had hoped to finish the year at under 100 murders. Blew my mind. Is there like a resolution? Because this isn't the first time we heard this. We heard under the Ministry of National Security, uh, under the former administration with my very good friend, Marvin Deems, uh, during the time of the lockdown, uh, almost boasts with a sense of pride, an uh, undertone that just kind of, you know, it awash the conversation. It came from, from underneath and filled the room for me. When he said, well, we're under, we're going to be double digits. Do you remember this? I, I surmise it, right? I kind of break it back. So he says, we're going to be under double digits this year, but we're going to have less than 100 this year, Right? blew my mind that successive administrations, governments, and all those in authority seek to be able to keep the number down under a particular... Listen, there's no talk about eradication entirely. There's no talk about unification and bringing persons together to, to identify these issues and deal with it. This, this, this comparison that exists in the newspaper right now today is per capita. We have less than 300,000 people in the murder capital of the Bahamas, which is Nassau. An island 21 by 7. The island didn't expand and didn't detract. It's still 21 by 7. And there are no tactics other than the hopes and prayer vigils to keep the numbers under 3, under 100, under 3 digits. That is bananas to me. It's crazy to me. I don't know about you, but it's crazy to me that the only thing that we could hope for is, I hope they only kill 98 people this year. My God. It'll be a good year. My God. Because the second thing that actually comes to the forefront is the fact that criminals are killing criminals. Does that alleviate the burden on your mind? Does it alleviate the burden this morning? While it's on your morning run, all the way from Utah or Pennsylvania, or wherever you're from, with your pom pom shorts on and just being able to see the sun glisten down upon your shoulders, you jog from all the way by Bahama and exploring, you head west. This morning, watch me. As you head west in your stride, you reach, you're listening to Lady Gaga in your ears, and you hit your stride. Let me take off my singlet. Bam, you're bareback, you're sweating, you're in the Bahamas, baby, you're living, you're jogging. You pass uh, um, the west wind. As you jog, you continue to be able to head back. You headed west. And in your jog, 
just before you reached the sandals, right there off to the left, bop, 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 you heard gunshots. Talk to me. The fella catch a couple bullets, however it happened, runs in the middle of the road, drops down, collapse, dies on your morning jog for your first time visit here in the Bahamas. And the conversation that we see that actually engulfs our subconscious is we hope to God that we don't see more than 100 murders this year. Now, no one, this ain't vanilla skies. And there's no expectation that we could be able to anticipate where the criminals are and go pick them up before the crime is committed. But we're dealing with a grander issue here. And the bigger issue that we're dealing with is not just crime, it's just murders. It is a lack of community and hopelessness. How? First thing in the morning, before coffee, before your tea, before breakfast, is murder on your mind. Let's just talk about these things. How? How? Let's talk about these things. And I want you guys to be a part of the conversation with me today. The numbers that to call, 323-6232. 325-4316-325-4259, or you can hit me up, 422-4796, 422-4796. Are you afraid? Are you afraid that our position will shift regionally? Are you afraid? Are you content, comfortable in your position for all those who are a part of tourism and understand the rhythm that exists in this particular space. Are you afraid that persons will make a decision eventually or inevitably that this world is but a community? What's the difference of being on a plane for a few minutes or being able to experience something around the next side of the world for a few hours? It's just time. But time will give you the experience. Can that time also yield something else? Can it give us the assurance that we can see nobody getting shot down in the front of us in Dubai? These are the questions that we got. These are the questions that we have. And this is what exists before us. We're eighth in the region. Why are you content with that? Listen to the other persons here. Listen who we're amidst. Listen to me. Jamaica beat us. Turks and Caicos beat us, which is blowing my mind. St. Lucia is third. Venezuela is fourth. Venezuela is fourth. Be on this list. Venezuela, who having relentless... These countries are having issues, relentless issues. And I recognize that we're not the only ones that are suffering from this hopelessness. And this idea of being able to find true sense of purpose. That's what people are fighting for, man. Ain't nobody fighting for no drugs. In my mind, I don't think... Listen, the, the young kids that I went to school with who dropped out of school in the 8th grade. We had this one guy who used to go to school with us. Guys, please call back. 323-6232-325-4316. Uh, Did I say it too fast? 323-6232. 323-6232. 325-4316. Four two five nine or hit me up on the text line four two two four seven nine six. Um, there's this guy who I used to go to school with. Uh, man, these guys are so talented, man. Uh, this was during the time that they had uh, Comic View on BET. Remember that? Just before Comic View on BET, I was baffled by how quick witted that some of these guys were. They, I mean, they used to go at uh, your ma. You know, you know, Americans would say yo mama, right? But we your ma so this your ma. These, I mean, they had us laughing from we were kids. We were in the seventh grade, just came out of the sixth grade, the seventh grade. And, you know, one of the guys had these hard church shoes on with the pennies. He had the penny in the shoe, right? You remember the, the, the penny loafers, right? He had the penny in the shoe and white socks on. His, his pants was gunning. You know they didn't have it, but they're here. Praise God, right? My guy, I mean, listen, they was quick with it. Boom, boom, boom. 
and they just wasn't performing in school. I tell you, I know these people. I know you. I know you. You sitting there, I don't care where you are. You could be under the tree in the ghetto right now. I know you. I went to school with y'all. It is no different from what has happened in 8 Mile Rock and what happened in Bay in Town. It's the same thing. And whilst I'm in those areas and the fellas quick with it, by the time as we hit the eighth grade, they give up on school and just about to give up on life until there was a recruiter that come from their community and say, man, you might as well drop this school thing and go deal with some drugs. Come do something for me. Eighth grade, my guys dropped out of school. I still know them today. They hear me. Who live in? To sell drugs on this one island and look for opportunity. These fellas don't want to sell drugs. We never envisioned selling drugs as children. We only wanted the shiny things. And so when I say that there is hopelessness in this community, it's because they don't see any other alternatives for them. No one has taken the time out to educate them, to empower them, to speak into their lives. No one has taken the time out to be able to explain to them that maybe your father isn't here for whatever reason, but that doesn't mean that you weren't called for a purpose. No one has taken the time out other than to say, shut up, you're just like your daddy. I know you're going to end up in jail just like him. And I'm, this is the PG-13 version on the radio. You know what y'all is telling these children. There could be no other expectation that they end up on the streets dead because that's what you tell them. You tell them you're going to end up dead on the streets like a dog. That's what you told them. That's what you told them. And now when you see it, you're in awe. Oh, my God, I can't believe. Oh, my God. I can't believe they're killing each other like dogs in the street. You didn't tell them this. The teachers told them this. The hopelessness is like a thread that runs through the entire region now that we're seeing on the paper. That's what we're seeing on the paper. How do we rectify this? How do we modify this? How do we get to a better space? Let's read a couple of these texts before we get to a commercial break. It says, Good day, Howard. Is there a sovereign wealth fund in existence? Let's get to the next one. It says, Good day, Howard. This is a uh, <laughs> uh, question. I have a love for cake. Anyone knows uh, me will tell you that I could eat an entire birthday cake in four days flat out. I love cake bad. Where does this come from? You're coming from all the way, all the far. Oh, this, 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 this okay. This, obviously, it was another show. Let's go. So this is good day, Howard. If you eradicate murders, uh, you eradicate jobs for the morticians the police, the lawyers, the doctors, you see how much jobs you affect by eradicating crime. This is crazy that you say that. Their titles and their positions only exist because crime exists. If you eradicate that, the talent that exists in these people got to find something else to do. That's all. Guys, be a part of the conversation today. 323-6232-325-4316, 325 This is a Friday, baby. <laughs> But we can dive into these conversations today. You're killing the churn in the street like a dog. Like a dead dog in the street. And all we can say is, mother sick. Mother sick, dread. That's all we can say. And hope to God that we kill less than 100 this year. Are you counting? Can you count? These numbers are climbing, ladies and gentlemen. And we in the sixth week of 2023. Let's take this quick commercial break and be right back after this. The Foundation. Fidelity. We're good for you. Whether your business is in store, on the go, or both, let Fidelity work with you to maximize your customers' payment options with a fixed or mobile terminal so that you never miss a sale. It's safer than cash and more convenient so that you can take your business anywhere. For details, contact a business development officer today at 356-7764 in Nassau or 352-6676 in Freeport or visit our website at fidelitygroup.com. Fidelity, we're good for you. 
It's a new year, and you're super excited to start the year off right. You've made your New Year's resolutions, doing more exercising, healthier eating, saving more, making better decisions and all that. If you have information or products that encourages healthy living, promotes sound financial decisions, or even promotes a positive lifestyle, one smart decision is to advertise in the Nassau Guardian's Healthy, Wealthy, and Wise Supplement. So if you're a physician, speech, massage, or physiotherapist, own a gym, nutritional deli, or restaurant, does your financial insurance institution or credit institution have the plan for investing wisely? Then that information should be in the Nassau Guardian's Healthy, Wealthy, and Wise Supplement. One low price gives you an ad in the supplement plus 15 30-second commercials. Interviews also available on Star 106 Hits, Guardian Radio, and Hot 91. Contact your account executives or the Nassau Guardian now. Start the new year right in the Nassau Guardian's Healthy, Wealthy, and Wise Supplement. Greetings. Allow me to introduce myself. I am the... You will see the live crunch chicken sandwich from Wendy's. And I have a little of everything. Avocado, taco mayo, pickles, and crunchy tortillas on top of a delicious breaded chicken filet. Yes, the new Wendy's tortilla lime crunch chicken sandwich has as many flavor personalities. Try it today at your Wendy's where we are different inside and out. Tired of banks forcing you to use technology to bank the way they want you to? Your convenience is important. So no matter what your banking needs, Commonwealth Bank's friendly staff are always available in branch for that personal one-on-one service. But when you choose technology, our online and mobile banking app offers you state-of-the-art functionality. The choice is yours. Commonwealth Bank. Bank the way you want. This is Guardian Radio 96.9 FM, Nassau, Bahamas. Excuse me for me to interrupt Sean. Will you come and the way reminder to say this coming Friday on a police corner over the lawn? You went to see my number one town round town. I did so Friday evening. Boom! The people just died of working. Fana, fana, Lord, them here did this complain. Boom! It made them feel. And we are back, ladies and gentlemen, 96.9 FM Radio, Howard Grant and your company with the foundation, really chopping it down on this beautiful Friday, uh, just taking your time. Now, listen to me. Uh, just before we kind of get back into the conversation, if you're just tuning in, we're just talking about what's going on. The lines are wide open. If you want to have a conversation and kind of throw your two cents in there, uh, please be a part of it. 323-6232, 325-4316, or hit me up on the text 422-4796. Before we dive into anything and kind of get further on, this is the point where I like to say, hopefully get your conch salad. Really, where are you? Talk to me. Huh? You need to, you need to put your, you gotta put your commercial together. Talk to me. Let the people know where they can get some good Kong salad. Yeah, I mean, obviously you know. If you're out there and you're one of these avid persons that you kind of go out and, and relax on the Friday, and trust me, I just take two pills. My neck hurting in the back here, and um, uh, you know, it's been a stressful week in terms of uh, what I got to do. I didn't run do a million things this week. Last night was um, um. Junior John Canoe. My kids hadn't slept for two days. They in there pacing, they doing this, they doing that. And then they was exhausted this morning, right? So I was like, I don't know if y'all could go to school, just go to sleep, right? Uh, they had a beautiful time. My kids over at Jordan Principal, uh, they said that the experience was absolutely wonderful. Uh, so I had to go out there. And also uh, we had a, a little refresher academy at church. So, you know, I was there. Uh, listen, man, this, this week has been a lot so it's important that you kind of wind down and uh, take on a position that you can kind of just chill out over the weekend and find some place you can kick back. And so I like to always identify those spots and places. But I'm not going to be out here yelling and screaming your name and you're not investing in your thing. Talk to me. I might as well just shoot straight with you. All right? So um, um, if you're out there and listen, my good friend Byron also over at the Tiki Hut, watch me. And I do this because the commitment that you've made to me and to the station uh, in the past. I want persons to know that these are the places that you can go 
They're safe places. They're cool. They're calm. It's a homely environment, a welcoming environment. Um, uh, sometimes you want to go where everybody knows your name. You see what they did there? Sometimes you want <laughs> little, little chairs, right? So it's a beautiful location. But come and invest with me. If you want to do that, if you want me to be able to kind of carry that message even further, please. 827-0111, 827-0111, and we can be able to do that. Today, we're just talking about some things. Oh, before we go further, uh, Sasha Hoyt. She celebrated her birthday yesterday. Happy birthday, Sasha. Uh, Bertha McDermott is celebrating a birthday today. Silbert Mills is celebrating a birthday today. Who else I see? Um, if you're celebrating a birthday today, please text me. Eight two, um, um, 422-4796, 422-4796. Let me give you a shout out. Sasha Hoyt, uh, happy birthday to you, man. You, uh, This is my baby's godmother, and uh, you've been phenomenal. I just pray that the Father wash, watches over you and keeps you in every way imaginable, and you enjoy your birthday, you and Chico. You guys uh, are absolutely wonderful, and we thank you for, for contributing and being a part of our kids' lives. So we just wanted to kind of say that to you guys, right? Um, it's a beautiful day, guys. I mean, for most of us, talk to me. It's a beautiful day. We're still here. Somebody can make it to Christmas. Not in a bad way. And we don't say this jeeringly, jokingly, flippantly. It's just the sad reality. The sad reality. That we've seen people just getting snuffed out in the front of us. I've got a text here. I want to read this text to you. I'm... Um, so you can be able to see exactly where we want, where we are. So this is good day. It's unfortunate. Good day. It's unfortunate that what happened this morning. But that's things that we can't control. This can happen anywhere. We are not crime free. We don't want it to happen, but we need to really help our young people and our nation. That's a text that actually came through. There's another text that says, Howard, urgent. This illegal immigration problem has now become a very serious situation. There's a video out there with 20 Haitians. I'm not going to read the rest of that. I'm just not going to do it. I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to read the rest of that. And then there's a second text that comes behind that and said, before you read that out loud, I'm getting word that this may not be Nassau. This is too heavy. You want me to come on the people parade? I mean, come on the people uh, uh, radio. And let's blame the Haitians. Is that the first thing that we do? It's illegal immigration problem. Let's blame the Haitians. I don't know if I could be able to participate in that. I want to read something else from the article today. Inside Crime stated that alongside heightening consequences for illegal gun owners, the government resorted to another tried and tested and usually underwhelming approach, repeatedly enacting states of emergency across much of the islands. And this is what the former administration not necessarily articulated, but boast of. The double digits that we saw in murders under their, their watch during 2021, uh, I think to, 2020, 2021, the double digits that didn't actually creep over wasn't as a result of anything to do with crime stoppers. It wasn't as a result of these programs that you put in place that was actually working. It was as a result of people in their house. We was locked down. But as soon as we get out here and able to travail the city, there's an expectation that we have triple digits. You know the numbers to call. Let me take a telephone call. On the line right now. I'll call you on the line with this live. Go ahead. Hello. How are you doing, man? I'm good, man. What's happening? Everything's good. How about them all? You said that Sex and the has the highest uh, per capita rate in the Caribbean? Per capita. There is per a. Capita, yeah. yeah, per capita. And who is that guy? Uh, let, me, let me get it right now. Hold up. Jamaica. I know you. Jamaica is second. Jamaica is second. So Jamaica is second. No, Bahamas is eighth. Jamaica is second. Uh -huh. Third is St. Lucia. And fourth is Venezuela. Okay. So this is for the region, the entire region. So, um, uh, what about Haiti? Haiti? Isn't, um, uh... Haiti didn't even make the list. Let me tell you why. It says, in addition to Haiti, um, Argentina, Bolivia, and Peru, 
um, they were not ranked because there was no available statistics. What that means is that they just didn't take the numbers. And it's going to be difficult to take these numbers in Haiti because they have this turf war going on, shooting people, throwing them in a the hole. So you don't even know who's dying. So they, they don't have a government now, eh? Well, they're still in turmoil. Okay, no government? They're still in turmoil. Well, I can't tell you that there's no okay. government. There is a government in place. Okay, so um, uh, how is Do you think that I'm uh, like in TI, right? Hello? I read here. What's the population of TI? That's your home. 45,000. The, the story is actually... Um, uh, it's less than about 45,000, I think. 45,000. Yeah, I think so, between uh, T.I. and Grand Muhammad the same population, Do they have an uh, illegal migration problem like, like the Bahamas? Major. No. Major. Major. So, okay, okay. So that telling you something, you know, it doesn't or it doesn't, no? Well, let me see what it's telling you, and then let's see if we can break it down. Well, uh, we have you the same problem, right? You, we have you, a... You, you correlate crime... Problem, right? You correlate... Hello? Hold on, watch me. You correlate in crime... Directly with illegal immigration. How it? How it? Is illegal, illegal migration a crime? Yeah, what is it? Yeah. Okay, good, good. So don't ask that dumb question then. How it? You correlating murders then. Let's just break it down. You correlating murders and significant crime increase because the story also speaks about rape. Yeah, but let me show you something. In your show, when you began, you still are talking about the drug era, right? With the cocaine yeah. and the dope, right? Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. we, 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 we can see back that far to right today to say that our problem is the cocaine and the dope. Mm -hmm. The cocaine and the dope are all around the world. You agree or disagree? Yeah. Okay, so you figure figuring out because it's in the Bahamas, we differ from everyone else in the world, so we just go in wild crazy. No, but right? I, I don't feel like that. Okay, I don't good. figure that. That's why I put okay, the question good. out to and you. That, that, that's, that's in the 70s you're talking about, because those chemicals and, 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 and Mara want to be around before we've been born. You realize that, right? Yes, yes. Okay, good. And they could still be around and be dead. You realize that, right? Okay. Okay, good. Now, the but, problem, I mean, like, you didn't want to come to terms with it. You even want to talk about it, right? But, I mean, like, you have law-abiding law, law, law citizens, and you have people who come in illegally. What do you think illegal people are doing? They no, already I break the law when they end. You think they can be law-abiding? I can't do this. I can't. I can't say oh, that. But don't be like that, Howard, man. It's obvious. You I only want to be Howard, decent. Man. I want to be decent. Uh, you being decent, Howard, but you got to be truthful and decent, not just decent to have a job. To say that, oh, God, no, no, no. This ain't about having a job. This is about really being... Okay, for me, and I appreciate your telephone call. I got a couple more people on there, right? Uh, for me, I believe that this has to do with introspection. I believe that if we collectively come to a consensus as a community to say that this issue is as a result of illegal migrants and irregular persons in our community, then we know, okay, we had to target this, okay? If we could be able to identify that the what's birthed out of these criminal uh, communities and out of these uh, issues or whatnot, is as a result of illegal mic. Okay, let's let's say hypothetically. Hypothetically, if we could do the statistics to identify the 120 some to 120 some people that have passed away, and then we start to be able to do background checks on them, and we look at them and we say, okay, well this one is illegal, or this one is irregular, and this one is irregular. Okay, so you that's statistics. You could put that down and say these are the statistics. Out of 120 some murders, these persons there were. 74% irregular in the country. That's easy. That's not difficult. You can find that out. But that's not what's coming forward from our police reports. The police reports, what comes at the forefront is that these people were known to the police. So there's no correlation. No one connects the two to say that this is a result of this or this is a result of that. It's easier to do in Turks and Caicos because Turks and Caicos right now is saying to everyone, hey, listen, come back home. So it could tell you that original Turks and Caicos Islanders are not there, but that's not so for the Bahamas. That's not so for the Bahamas. The people who I see crying and getting dressed up and putting on all these female clothes and putting on it, these Bahamian children, these Bahamian people. So what you're saying to me is that I, that's why my decency got to kick in and ask you the question. For you to do the introspection to dive in yourself if this really is issue. And if you're saying to me cocaine all over the world, even if you move the illegals, we can still have the issue. Is that what you're saying? But it cannot be so. 
Because I don't remember my granddaddy them killing everybody. If cocaine was always with us. If opioids and popoids and, 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 and poppy and whatnot was always with us. Let's shoot straight with the thing, man. We can have our Sawyer boy come in at 1 o'clock to talk about what he's going to be doing. And we can dive deeper into this conversation. He's going to be here for us for maybe about 10, 15 minutes. We'll be talking about uh, what he's doing next week. Um, uh, I think at the cafe studio. I think that's what he says his name. So he should be here with us. But this is the foundation, guys. Please be a part of the conversation. 323-6232. 325-4316-325-4259 or 4224796. Hit us with the text. We're going to take this quick commercial break. Get to news and be right back on the foundation after this. The foundation. This is Guardian Radio 96.9 FM, Nassau, Bahamas. Your station for up-to-the-minute news, intelligent, interactive, and engaging conversation. 96.9 FM. At Ron's Electric Motors, they repair and rewind all major brands of electric motors, including water pumps, generators, and the generator's back end, welding machines, electric lifts, air compressors, battery chargers, and more. They equip to handle up to 850 kilowatts and rewind up to 450 horsepower motors. They're conveniently located on the corner of Wolf and Clarence Roads and are open weekdays, 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. Saturdays till noon. They offer 24 hours emergency assistance. You can reach them at 242-356-0249. Whether your business is in store, on the go, or both, let Fidelity work with you to maximize your customer's payment options with a fixed or mobile terminal so that you never miss a sale. It's safer than cash and more convenient so that you can take your business anywhere. For details, contact a business development officer today at 356-7764 in Nassau or 352-6676 in Freeport or visit our website at fidelitygroup.com. Ready to step into the future? From your front door to the backyard and everywhere in between. See and speak to whoever's there with ring video doorbells and security cameras now available at Alive. Protect what matters most. All from one easy app. Available in your Google or Apple Play Store. Visit BeAlive.com slash ring to learn more. We are Alive. This is Guardian Radio 96.9 FM, Nassau, Bahamas. Excuse me for me to eat you up, Sean. Will you come and remind me to say this coming Friday? I'm a police going to open up the lawn. You went to see my number one town round town. I did so Friday evening. Boom! The people just tired of working. But I'm going to lock them here to this complaint. Boom! It made them feel. Ain't no summer set. Break down with the great town with the disco operator. Five double eighteen and a six tweeter. I did so did the top tweeter. See long in just that up with the echo chamber. But watch your man. Play the play. I did multi rock the game. Them off the step with them cast it down and play. And we are back, ladies and gentlemen. 96.9 FM radio. Howard Grant and your company. This is the foundation. Just chopping it down on this kind of warm and easy Friday, uh, really being able to get into a few things and, and talk about, uh, for me, uh, what is bananas is this crime, right? This is just bananas, right? It's crazy how you just keep killing down and chopping down people. Uh, but before we do that, I told you I had a nice treat for you, right? I told you I had a nice little treat for you. And um, um, my good friend is in here in the studio with me today. Saw your boy. Huh? Saw your boy in the studio today. Saw your say good afternoon to people. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. What's going on? Saw it's good to see you, my boy. Yeah, man. It's good to see you too. Yeah, well, it's slim in here. Huh? Hey, listen to me. Listen. From COVID, you ain't you you COVID. still looking like El de Baj and hey. you're like Chico de Baj. Listen to me. COVID COVID was good to me, but you're like Chico de Baj. Yeah, but I trying to put my little curl inside my ear right now, boy. 
Let's do that. One time. What's happening with you, man? Oh, yeah, everything good, bro. It's everything always good. good I can't to see even complain. No. Even though I complain, it, but I just complain to myself. You just keep it to yourself. Just keep it to myself. It made no sense. You don't text it and then put it out like on Twitter or nothing like that. Oh well, all, everything that I post is be me complaining, but I try to make it sound funny. But <laughs> if you smart, like you'll pick up on it, yeah. But he's going through something. He's going through something. He did something. Yeah. Yeah. But to- sorry, tell me this, man. I wanted to kind of uh, bring you in to talk about an event that you got to be doing next week. Uh, all for the lovers. Yeah. What yeah, you doing man. for the lovers? Man, listen, I trying to, I trying to, I trying to bring real dating and thing back, man. Sorry, this heavy. What you say it? Yeah. Because one of the conversations we have right here on the show is that chivalry is dead. Fellas don't even know how to cut up with women no more. No. They don't know what to say. No. Right? I, when I used to, when I first started coming to Nassau, you know, we from Grand Mom from Maple right. Rock, the fellow would say to my cousin, nah, she's just as big as me, right? he say, hey, bright light, right? <laughs> <laughs> he call her. He call her. He call her bright light. So she answered. The fella had four Guinness in his pocket, and every one in his pocket he had a Guinness, and he had two in his hand. Now me and a catching bus down town now, so, mm. and the fella say bright light, right? Bright light. Bright. She big and red, right? Mm. Say, bright light. She say he ain't talking to me. I say I think we now. So I think he's talking to you. I, I'm sure he's not talking to me. No, he ain't talking. Me. I said yeah, I don't think he's he me. He me. Six pack of Guinness. The fella got on him. He say hey. Big draws. I saw oh, Jesus Christ. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. You reached out to him. I say, he talking to you, right? Yeah. Say, he talking to you. But it was such a, it was a cute way. It was like he was yeah. trying to cut up with her. Hey, that's what he, he didn't have with. the words. No. That don't, don't happen no more. No. You don't need words too much. The fellas, what, what's right he? Now. Vibes Cartel caused this. He has exchange. said to me, man, like, exchange is no robbery. Talk to me. Yeah, man, exchange ain't no robbery. Right this now, that's to much. the point where. Yeah, man, what you got for me? If you got something for me, then if you got something for me, I got something for you, and we can do that, and we can call it a day. Man, that's a lot, that's man. That's what it is. That's a lot. So, but you wanted to kind of change the culture. Yeah, man. I want, I want people to come out and still, I want you to come out and eat and enjoy your, sh- enjoy your good show and still be able to hold on sitting under the table with the boys mm-hmm. in the room. I want you to do some dance. And plus, why you got to be under the table, though? Under the table, mm-hmm. on top of the table, wherever okay. you get your hands. Let's be very clear. Let's, 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 let's leave it on top of the table. Leave it on top of the table. Leave it on top of the table, because if it's under the table, yeah, then this may not be a woman. Too. I see your elbow moving too much, and then I know. <laughs> Somebody elbow moving too much under that table. Hey, hey, put all, the, put all your hands on the table for me, please. Where are you going to have the event? So Mom, we having it by uh, we having it by Studio Cafe, so you know that's where I start off doing my comedy. Like stand up comedy, that's where mm-hmm. I started comedy Thursdays. First time I, like when I started to touch the mic and people started bringing me on to host events, I was like, boy, I need to start doing my own. So I ended up doing my own in 2017. And How do you know you could do this? But yeah, I know. I, just, ain't, I ain't know. You used to do this for me in school, nope. right? You never used to talk foolishness in school? Yeah, in biology class, that's it. That's it? Yeah, but in biology class, my dad was Somebody tell you, why you, I, you could be a comedian. Man. Yeah, that happened in 2011, though. Really? 2011. That's when someone really tell me, that's when my cousin really tell me, but you need to just start recording this and putting this out for people to see, but you so can't you just be making us laugh. Listen, I can be honest with you. Uh, you, Dasquay, I just want to be very clear about mm-hmm. this. You all have an international capability. I'm telling you, boy, you have the appeal. You have the wherewithal. There are a lot of Caribbean people in the world. Jamaica, the whole of New York, the whole of the yep. five boroughs is Caribbean it's people. Caribbean people, yeah. That's all these, this, the whole of the five boroughs. And we'll put that bohemian style in there. And you put that bohemian style yeah, in there. You can't miss that. I'm changing my voice for nobody. No, you get don't, this don't. Strong, strong. Because I had friends, I had friends who go away for two days over the weekend. They catch a five o'clock flight flight on Friday and come back <laughs> Sunday evening. Yo, man, what's up, brother? <laughs> I see one of <laughs> I see a little young boy now who's be on who's be on TikTok and then he gonna he move away he must be been away from like a month and a half. Y'all man, y'all yo, how y'all? I'm, I'm I'm eating fries. What are you doing? I swear that's be talking. Y'all man, like, what's up, brother? Yeah, I I'm ain't, trying to tell you, son. I ain't that. It's too much. I ain't that. And I don't I ain't, I don't respect nobody who they call American. Like who over here? And you been here for 15 years and you still get this American accent, but you lying. So yeah, I was a 95. No, I was an I 75 going up to where we call uh, Kings. No, I'm um. Lion Country Safari, carrying the kids up there. I don't know. You know, in the States, it just don't feel like you're speeding. Right, if you don't right. look at the, 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 you know, the road's good. Right, right. I must have was hitting 95, almost 100. We were just flying, right? And, like you know, the, 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 the trooper come up, boom, behind us, right? Yeah. Whoop, whoop. So I said, oh, Jesus. So I pull in the side. I know you used to be scared with the police. Oh, my God. Go, hey, now, all my children in the car, my wife in the car. I yeah. got two kids at the time. And the fella come to me. I said, okay, y'all be quiet, please. Let daddy deal with this, right? Fella come to the guy. I say, yeah, man, what you saying, man? <laughs> oh, 
Hey, don't you? Hold on. Wait, what? 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 I say, yeah, man. When you say, man, everything good, man. Look here, I apologize, man. I didn't really know. I was speeding, you know. I say, it, right? so he's like, he said, where you from, boy? So I said, no, man. He said, who you calling, man, boy? So I said, oh, man, I apologize for that, man. I'm from the Bahamas, and I give him my license, right? Yeah. He said, all right, you stay right here until I come back. You come back to the car. Give me a lesson back. He said, man, we had a great time in the Bahamas. <laughs> hey, man, I'm telling you. I only say that to say, yeah, you got to keep your authenticity with you. Yeah, buddy. Because that sometimes could be able to separate the sheep from the goat. You're right. No, you're absolutely correct. All right. You're absolutely I ain't changing my... I, 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 I ain't changing that. I ain't changing that. So they you can know what I got me in. You got international appeal, man. You could do some wonderful stuff. I want to see you all on the international stage. Maybe you need a good... Um, uh, I'm sure you got one. But you can need a good talent agent, man, to put you in these places. Get yourself in. I ain't get nothing. Listen, they been talk, they're listening right now. Huh? They listening to you? Good. Hey, listen, I don't have nobody uh, who so helps me doing nothing right now. I'm doing thing? everything right now. Listen, I, I ain't gonna lie. I know I to the point where I can't do everything that I want to do on my own no more. Like, yeah. I already been doing this for a decade now by myself. And it was like, I wanted to prove you that to me. You only can carry yourself so far. Right. And I already, I, and I think I did a really good job to help really me did. where I at right now. So yeah. it's now it's like, I feel comfortable enough to let somebody come on or let people come on and actually help me and not feel like I ain't doing it. So Sorry, when we listen to stories, uh, when we listen to Steve Harvey, when we listen to Cedric the Entertainer, when we listen to uh, about how Martin started and you start to watch these documentaries, it ain't no different than what you're doing, you no. know, right? Steve Harvey had no money. Right. He was yeah, broke. He yeah, lived yeah. in his car. I watched that one. You know what I'm saying? And he started to talk about his sort of determination and that faith. And I know you got that faith. Yeah, man. It, yeah, it, you, it, it, you, it, yeah. I hear you talking more and more about God since yeah, you man. come with the hospital. I is Marky's son and everything with he is there with me. Uh, it, like, like I say, it never left nowhere. And like I say, after COVID, everything kind of changed. Like it, 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 it hit home even more. So I, 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 I just to the point right now where I respecting it more and taking it more seriously. And plus yeah. I know where I come from and... What the what what the mission really is now, and plus, like I say, it's not the first time I almost did, but that was the first time it really get to that point where it was like, oh, the other you're times like you didn't want to put that though. The other times is well, yeah, I got to run, the little red run a couple of times and things. The little red yeah, guys, uh, no, but I don't like no red. I read <laughs> red people don't like red people like that no. Unless you're on an island somewhere, but if you're in Nassau, if you're in Nassau, do you tell me when last you see two red couples together? If they ain't deep so for long all of my children, high conky Joe colors. Yeah. They bright it in you. They don't like conky Joe. No, well, no, no, my son. Not he, yet. No, no. You won't know yet, but by My I son, know. he's 17. He's 17. Oh, yeah. From he was a little boy, I see him looking at the Angie Mima looking moment. Of moment. course. And they dark. Yeah, boy. Angie, he's, uh, he always oh. smiled with them. Bro. I said, sir, I got to watch out for I you. come from D.W. Davis. All I know is big. That's, that's all I know. Want. Everyone, they from East Street. That's what you like. Everyone, they dark. They get, they, they, I love it. Mm. I love it up to this day. So we got to get you straight. Hey, listen. listen, we got to get you married in 2023. Yeah, man. And this is the mother of love now, but. This is the mother of love. I'm mad, but I used to be sleeping alone, but you know what Cole looks like, but. It's cold outside. I, I don't know. And this I, y'all wear, you know, you I know the, the, the ladies love you all around this time. And, and my woman's small and slim. She can't wait till it yeah, get cold. She won't cuddle. Nobody is calling me, but Nobody's calling Not you. right now. But so you're getting slimmer. My blanket is, is, is silk. They said I don't. Two quilts. Two quilts, yeah. I, <laughs> my grandma got to make one of them. The water thermos in the middle of it, then you yeah, could be all right. Yeah, yeah. Other than that, but it's just, hey, it's just me out. out there. But hey. It's time, man. It's you want it? Do you want to get married? Yeah, man. At some point, at some point. I want to be real, though. I don't want these fake these fake relationships with these people love now. You want fake someone local or you want out island guys? Um, I can't I can't really say it. it. Like everything used to be local, but now like it's it different now. It's kind of like it's a national law now. It might know. it might happen because I know because Rihanna ain't gonna be in this relationship too Whoa. long, and I still get high hopes that me and Rihanna. <laughs> Even though Rihanna, baby, your first want, baby supposed to have been a soil. You don't want her, sir. You, you don't want Yeah, man, I like big forehead guys. You, you want her? I like big forehead guys. That's the target Amy. right there. Yeah, but she's the queen of big foreheads, but I love them. That's why I treat, uh, my wife, she keep telling me, well, if I wasn't with you, I'd be with Chris Brown. I said, well, baby, if you want me to beat you, just tell me. <laughs> <laughs> That's what Chris is doing. That's <laughs> That's what Chris is doing. Talk that is, to me. that is, that is what Chris That's is doing. That's his thing. Yeah. That is what Chris is too. But you know, Rihanna, she can fight you back. I know. That's she why won't. you like that, Chris. That's why uh, Chris had the uh, the, the, the conference. There's no way he just jump up and do that. She, I know. She's I check. I woman. check. She's a Caribbean I, woman, exactly. And I check plenty of Bahamian women, and it was plenty times when if I was like that, it probably would have happened. But I ain't like that. I just is come out the gun, just walk. 
Just Boy, like, yeah, just, just use a go. good, decent man. Yeah, you have to, man. I read. Hey, Again, listen, I... we got to pray for, for Sawyer to find a little sweet thing in the can this year. This so year? you can be able to hold it. This is this, this, yeah, this, this 2023. Yeah, this is the year, Jordan. the best year. You get yeah, a, an odd number year. Jordan, yeah. Mm-hmm. You find the right one for you. Make Bang it a line. Make some children and thing. You, and... Get, you get it. Listen to me. When I met my woman, I didn't know I didn't like her right off the top. I've been married now. This year, it's going to be 20 years. All right. I thought you'd, you'd I've been married it. for 20 years. I've been with her for 23 years from 2000. So you all build that. You all, you all build that relationship. I wanted that. I wanted, when I met her, the first thing I say, oh my God, this woman to make a good wife. She'd make a good mother for my children. Mm, I had no journey. That's what you say. That's a, and plenty of people don't say that no more, you know. She's plenty make a good mother. No, no, she had all the church in her. She's go all the Bible study. Right. She's like Ruby Ann Cooper darling. She was telling us how she's going to church nine times a week. Right? Yeah. So that was my wife. She knew all the hymns and everything. Right, I said, right. Oh my God, this, this is a good decent woman for maturity. Yeah. <laughs> and then I fall in love with her deep. And we've been married for 20 years. I'm married. Long. I'm, on that. I'm mar- Listen, in three weeks, I made a decision that I wanted this woman to be my wife. After I start cutting up with her. In three weeks. Three weeks. Three weeks. She, she, she just so felt like no, the one. Man, don't make ta- don't, we don't take long to make decisions. No, man. My, my decisions usually be to leave. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> in three weeks, it's time for me to go. Hold on, miss. I don't see something, but <laughs> people be out there lying and thing. Where I, I wait, but I wait for you to slip up. Like, hey, that's you. That's the real you right there. Take me six weeks to see it, but I see it. Time for me to go, boy. I did, you gone? Oh yeah, boy. No man. Oh I, yeah, I gone. It, but it don't take a man a long time to make a decision. I never. Uh, I am uh, whether superficial or not. I just gauge how I when I walk into a space. If I see something that attracts me, I move towards it and I I deal with it accordingly. You understand know what I'm saying? I was scary, man. I what been, you scared I, for? I been I been scary. Like that ain't never been my thing. Like what you saying right now? I right now I I but I'm 42 right now. And I still have a problem just walking up to someone and just starting a conversation like on that You're level. Serious? On that level, I can't, I can't I can't do it on that level. I have to I have to work my way in it differently and then kind of make it that way. I can't just I I can't even just go up to someone and be like, hey, what you saying, man? How, how you doing? My name is blah blah blah. What's your name? And like start it off with I think I like you. I would like well, to get to know you. Like I mean, do it. Just say, hey, hey, bright light. Red thing. Hey, hey. <laughs> red right up. Hey. That's what you got Big bongi. Red right up. <laughs> Hey, my size. Listen. Oh, yeah, that was yeah, the classic man. one. Hey, R and Bailey body. That, you know, plenty, really? I, you guys call them R and Bailey body, but I see some people. They look like they come from R M. What, what does that mean? They shaped like a wasp, boy. Really? Oh, yeah, boy. Body. You can see they used to wear that right, red and white stripe. They look like they's like. Wow. Yeah, boy. I, I don't small, know. small chest. You're I teaching me things, but not so every day. I don't know. You can look things. at some women. You could. I can look at some women. I can tell they come from government school compared to private school. Really? Oh yeah. Sorry, this is wild. What oh, you're yeah. saying to me? Oh yeah, boy. Oh, yeah, I pick you up. I tell you up front, but you come from sock. And you can see that. Yeah, I can see that. And then they say things like, poop. Oh, I don't poop. <gasps> really? I don't, fart. I don't do them things. Kill you lying. Oh, this, you come from sock. This yeah. is sock. This, some days leave. This yeah. is a sock conversation. Yeah, that's a sock conversation. But you go inside the bathroom, but you can't flush the toilet twice, but they already know what you're doing. Oh. Well, I know what you've been doing. Now. Mm-mm, I don't do that. I don't talk to people who do that. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. Sawyer, you, I you, Ladies and gentlemen, this is Sawyer Boy with yeah, us, man. I'm yeah, so man. happy to have him in the studio yeah, with man. us. Sawyer, please tell him in Studio Cafe again next week. Uh, I don't know if you want to put the numbers out there and let persons know how they can be a part of this thing. Well, Studio Cafe, like I say, I have the flyers right there on my on my, uh, on my my page. So you can call Studio Cafe to RSVP. It's limited seat. We ain't looking for no big crowd. 20, 20 to 40 people. 20 to 40 people all together. We, we go, come, out, come out and have a good time. It's a four-course meal. You get uh you get comedy with me, my boy BJ, uh Basel, and we get uh spoken word from harsh reality. We get Ariel coming to touch the mic and she doing some singing. We get DJ Beaks could be on the on, on the This on a real the sexy yeah, listen, I don't play. If you never been to my show, you don't know what you're missing. This and is I, a real sexy Yeah, but the sexy sexy. And everything I talk about, like my jokes are gonna be centered around love, uh, around the whole theme. This thing, relationships. I'm gonna be all right. over the place. And right. the, I don't even know what I'm gonna say, but I know I can say it. Mm-hmm. Give me an hour and a half. I'll make you laugh. Oh, well, my goodness. Yeah, but, yeah, but. I'm sorry, I won't be there. I won't be in the place. Yeah, it could be good. We start at 8 o'clock. Like I say, it could be a nice, a nice environment. We could be upstairs at Studio Cafe. They've been doing some changes around there. So it's a nice little... And it is... It is like, you come there and you might, you might sit next to another couple. You know, it's small. And that's what I want to show people. Like, look here. That we, intimacy. Yeah, man. We, we intimate. Like, I walk around. I want you to be right there. I want, I, I'll make jokes, but you, you and your husband or I, everything. I just wanted to be very intimate. I want you to leave from there 
and be like, but we had a really, really good time. Give him the number, so give him the Facebook page, Saw Your Boy on Facebook. Yeah, right? for, Saw Your Boy TV. Once you go on my Facebook or Instagram page, you're going to see it, Saw Your Boy TV. Uh, laugh and Love, Laugh and Love, it's a, com- it's a, it's a dinner show. Yeah. I mean, I'm, not just, I'm, not, I'm not just saying a comedy show because it's more than just comedy. And we get some talented people out here, wait, yeah. like talented yeah. people out here. Everyone that touched the mic, you can be like, wow, wait, I didn't even know. I didn't yeah. know this. I didn't know this is like this over here. Yeah. This ain't like the mother's love when you come through and you be like, you want your money back. Because yeah. it was stale. No, but I ain't stale. You pay your money. You can get your money more than more. <laughs> That's how I do it. I aim the police. You their money back when Oh, yeah, but What? When you stale, but they, you stale, they, ain't even, they ain't even coming to find out if you stale or not. But if you put a little price on that, like when I start doing that, like, we just doing it for free. And then there's one day I say, but we can we can start charging them, charge them five dollars. Watch these two guys walk upstairs with a little cute bag, and then you know they get the heels on, and then they walk up to the door, they see the person sitting on there, like they say it's admission. She's like, how much is this five dollars? I watch them turn around and walk right back downstairs, boy. You ain't get no money in the place, boy. Say, come on, come on. Yeah, so but hey, they had no yeah, boy. You can't fight that. They said right downstairs and listen to us from upstairs. <laughs> I walked down. They said, no, no. I'll say, yes, there are two of them. They must catch ride out there and all that. Catch ride out there. But look, I want people to come out who ain't scared of no roach, man. So, That's the kind of woman I want. I want a woman who ain't gonna run if she see a roach. You know what I mean? I don't want you, you could, I, I, I don't want to, uh, it's a roach. Girl, you don't get no roach in your house. East Street. We can't be going. You can find one on East Street. We can't be going. I move inside a house and roaches was already in there, so I just let them stay. Hey, welcome. They yeah, had man, a little party. Like, yeah, we nah, that's crazy. When I moved to Nassau, you all tell me, but listen, anybody tell you they ain't got no uh, no insects and things in their house, no rock, they, they lying. lying. They lying. That's crazy. These people got roach. These women got roach in their purse. In their purse? Yeah, but you like, <laughs> listen, you, know, you can imagine you, 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 you rest your bag, you rest your bag on the table, you talk with you, you're going to get your drink, and that roach come and stick in your head right out, because we are. Yeah, that's the kind of thing. That's the kind of roaches we had, boy. My roaches is go out when we, had, when we go out. When they hear my mommy say, let's go, y'all get ready, we get on the beach. <laughs> a roach, mommy trying to turn, y'all get ready, we get on the beach. Let's get inside one of these bags. And roach come out, you trying to figure out why, why sound on the ceiling, walking up the ceiling. Look at my sound up here. Little sound on their foot, and then they gain up. You know, they get that little sound. Listen, so yeah, man, you go, listen. You go right. sleep all year. You trying to do something with someone, you got to keep coming over. Listen, y'all got to come out to this listen. thing. My studio cafe is going to be which day next week? On this on Valentine's oh, night. Valentine's Valentine's night. night. Oh, Valentine's night. 120 a ticket. I can tell you right now. It's 120. Did, not a ticket. 120 for everything. You get a four-course meal. You get a drink. And you get a comedy show. And I mean the whole show. Now, I know all behaviors go. 120. How much rice are y'all putting on enough for 120? <laughs> they want to come to rice. They want to know how long y'all have this, this, this meat season up here. We can eat more ice cubes than this inside. Chicken it. for 120, so? Wait, that's how they go. That's how they go. But that's what I got to do. I trying to change it up a little bit. Yeah. I trying to change it up a little bit because, but I know what you get and it's, it's going to be worth it. Because yeah. there ain't nowhere else you can go. And you're going you're gonna to get stand-up comedy or comedy where it's so, re- it, that is this relatable to you as no. a behemoth. Yeah. My jokes by saying at the junction of Camp Road and Camichael, right? That's where the shooting's happening. Come on, get at the junction of Camp Road and Camichael, because you know he's lying. See the voice, no come around. How it could be the junction? Y'all watch it, boy. They got a shooting right here at Camichael Road and Camp Road. Y'all gonna come out here by nine people on the floor. I listen, they dead. <laughs> ain't nobody dead. The muffler just sparked fire. That's all. Listen, and I listened to the voice note today. The fella says, man, the guy died over there, and then he get up and run right here and drop down there. <laughs> This is crazy. How much time did he die? How much time? This, this is too much. This is a caddy. Boy, behemoths, but listen, just record from now on and don't say nothing. Yeah, don't say thing. nothing. Don't say nothing. And when you do record, please be quiet. <laughs> you ever had him in the box trying to they put talking on? too much. And they speak more. Every voice note I ever come across, everybody sound the same. Everybody sound like the same gangster. <laughs> hey, boy, they all even know, but we all don't come over here. <laughs> hey, listen, boy. Hey, they must see no, but that was me. Like these, but them get on a tie and then get in the They work at Lannis and thing, but in food and beverage and thing, but. Spray them being waking from they were 17, they were fighting their life. I said, gangster, but y'all make sure I share the video. Share this video. And share this video. Share. And tag me in it so I could get some, some likes. likes. <laughs> they only want likes, but they want following. <laughs> but I see you share the video with a boy you there. Yeah, but that was me back in 2016. That was me. That was me. Listen. Someone tell me that before. But. So I got to thank you for, for stopping by the studio today and being able to do this on this sort of a light, casual Friday you that we're taking to talk about these things. That's You know, you in the building with us. 
So don't be a stranger. Come over and hear us sometime. Hi, Don. Hi, always. Just come over and hear us. people other than myself. Anytime Friday, because that's what you do in the studio. You just there by yourself. Yeah, that's what I do when I'm home. Friday, we here, man. If you want to be able to pass by and talk about the stuff. I think it's just me. I stalk myself. Sir, I don't have anybody in the studio for you. You need to calm down. Anytime, it's just me, man. You just calm down, right? Ladies and gentlemen, Sawyer Boy, being able to talk about us, uh, what he's going to be doing next week. On Valentine's Day in um, Island Studio Cafe, Island Studio, Studio Cafe. Cafe, right Odell West. Man, um, you can have a good show. Trust me, you're gonna have please a good show. Check it out, Soy Boy TV, Facebook, Soy Boy TV, Instagram. Purchase your tickets. It's a real intimate event. Mm-hmm. Get back to cutting up, yeah, which is sweet thing in the Dress can. Soya, I thank you, my brother. Yeah, man. No matter what age he is, I want the older crowd too. I like that mature crowd. Yeah. The mature crowd, we could we could really have a good they time. They like them so jokes, if you, man. If you're over 35 or over 40, you in your 50s, I don't care if you in your 60s, you come out there, I will help you ball it. Mm-hmm. And it could be so relatable that you'll be like, I could come and do this again. But see, people are going to come and see. You got to come and see it, man. Me on TV and me live is two different things. Saw your boy. All day. Man, listen to me. I, I look forward to this, my brother, and you got to be able to let us know. There's only a couple of people in the room, so we won't be able to yeah. see exactly what's what. We want to see more of this, man, so yeah. I, I people don't just have to cut up in February. They could cut up in June. Oh, man. I, I try to put together a comedy show for every single month of the year, 2023. Ooh, and not just in Nassau, you know. Really? Yeah, but I don't it. Well, coming out of my pocket to do that and all if I get to. We want to hear more about it right here. Ladies and gentlemen, I thank you so much for kind of tuning in and being a part of this. Sawyer Boy in the studio with us, 96.9 FM Radio. Howard Grant with the foundation. We're going to take this quick commercial break and be right back after this. Yes, sir. With so much going on in the world today, only accepting cash at your business can be risky. Let Fidelity offer you and your customers safety, convenience, and the flexibility of a fixed or mobile terminal. Take it with you, on the move and on the go, because business should never stop. For more details, speak to one of our business development officers at 356-7764 in Nassau or 352-6676 in Freeport. Visit our website at fidelitygroup.com or visit us at any of our branches. Guardian Radio and the Foundation are on the move. Bahamas, this one's for you. SBT. Small Business Thursdays. Every Thursday, the Foundation with Howard Grant will highlight small businesses throughout the country, far and wide. Your products, services, prices, and personality. We want to hear it all. Get your 30 or 60 second advertisement heard on air at a fraction of the cost. We here at the Foundation understand the times and don't want you to be left behind. With Guardian Radio, you reach your specific demographic and it is unmatched. We reach thousands daily. Get your products off the shelf and your services in their hearts. Small Business Thursdays with the Foundation only on Guardian Radio 96.9 FM. For more information, call 302-2300 or the Help Me Howard line at 827-0111. SBT. Small Business Thursdays. Get your business moving today. Divinius Grilled Food and Products are now open in the Kenneth Plaza, Prince Charles Drive. Come, you must try the jerk chicken, jerk pork, and all their amazing grilled food. Grilled daily to perfection using all their amazing sauces made right here in the Bahamas. Divinius, grilling good food for life. Call or what's up Divinius today at 817-4468. This is Guardian Radio, 96.9 FM. Fresh news, smart talk, all day. Excuse me for me to eat you up, Sean. Boy, you come. And the way you to say, this coming Friday, and a police going over the lawn. 
You may see man in number one town round town I did so Friday evening BIM! The people just died of working Fana fana Lord them hear the disco playing BIM! It make them feel like dancing Ain't no summer set Great and we'll be great and we'll see this car operator Five double eighteen and a six tweeter And this is DJ Top Sweeter This is on him just a up with the echo chamber But watch your man Play the play I did my tear off the game Them up is safe with them cats and we are back, ladies and gentlemen, 96.9 FM Radio, Howard Grant and your company, the foundation right here on this laid back Friday, really being able to chop these things down. And it's kind of laid back, but we're talking about some serious stuff. I wanted to kind of get, uh, you know, interject and, and, and put something in there and bring my guy Sawyer on, man. I'm, um, there's some very talented persons out here doing some stuff. Do you get a feel in the rhythm of what we're trying to do here at this show? This is for a community. This is for the community to grow. I want you to understand that there exists some persons outside of the sphere and the rhythm of what you do on a day-to-day -day basis. Maybe you travail the main thoroughfares of Nassau, but into those little cracks and those little crevices, those little cuts, right? There exists talent, rich talent. There exists opportunity. I'm telling you, don't neglect that. And hey, guess what? If no one's coming through your corner, you come out to the main road. And that's us. Give us a call, 827-0111, 827-0111. You can do that or call us here at the studio, 302-2300, 302-2300, and really get your stuff going, man. If you got talent, you get these particular things. Um, uh, you know people are sitting there, I, I bet it and saw you, man. But how we can know that? How we can know that from your living room in your front, in your front room in your, in your house? How we can know? Get yourself out there and put some stuff out there. I want to do that. And I want to be able to, to shout out uh, Devanias more specifically. You know, you guys are being, being able to do so, uh, great stuff. It says, um, we grill good for life. There's some taste that they got going on down there. It's right there at the Kenneth Plaza on Prince Charles. Uh, you can be able to give them a call, 817-4468. 817-4468 or check them out at www.devanias.com. They're going to be doing a grill and chill and sort of a taste thing on the weekend. Guys, please check them out. These guys are very good and I want to thank them. Their commitment to kind of run me down and say, Howard, we told you that we would support you. We're going to support you for the long term. And we are very, very, very appreciative for everything that Devanias uh, is doing down there. They got grilled foods, uh, conch fritters, grilled chicken, grilled wings, uh, Crack conch, jerk chicken, jerk pork, uh, grilled conch, cheeseburgers, all these things. Grilled barbecue chicken, juices, sodas, bottles, vitamin, the whole thing. Please check out Devanya's chicken, um, Devanya's grill uh, down there on um, Prince Charles. Man. These guys are doing wonderful stuff. Now, I want to read a couple of things, getting back to the conversation. If you want to be a part of it, please, 323 6232, 325 4316, 325 or hit us up on the text, 422 uh, Four two two four seven nine six. It says, "Let me see if I can read one or two of these things." Uh, we were just talking about the crime, right? I normally try to interject some form of humor in our conversations to try people to make people smile. At which point, um, as parents take responsibility for our kids, most people let their tablets and YouTube raise their kids and have become too busy securing our finances and paying bills, but falling down and raising our kids is most of us trying to show our kids we love them by buying them things. We have failed our kids and our community, right? This is an also, let's see if we can be able to open this up. This is an, and also, this might rub people the wrong way, but why if some of us can't afford to feed ourselves why are we having a lot of kids? Some of us don't have a pot to piss in. And this is what the text is. As much, and much less a window to throw it out of. And we still keeping, keep having kids and expect the government to take care of the kids. It might sound harsh, uh, what I said, but it's true. I don't know if that's true. I don't know if that's true. Because... Uh, these people coming from the south, they ain't got no pot, no window, no hut, no nothing. But they're here, and every time they get pregnant, the fellas say twice a year, some of them. 
The government is is accommodating them and taking care of them and feeding their children and taking care of their children and educating their children and doing all these things. Bahamian children can? You got to have your Bahamian children? Oh, Howard, we don't live like them. We don't, I don't know what you're talking about. They live in, we live in. They grow in the children, we grow in ours. They got five children, you got one. They got seven children, you got one. Let's have a very clear conversation about these things and the indifference and the imbalance that exists in our society. Right? It says policing in the current form becoming more and more ineffective and insufficient. It says we need to reinvent policing. Uh, that's a telephone call. Guys, 323, you know the number, 323 uh, or hit us up, 422-4796. Please give me a call before we get out of here and being able to contribute to the conversation. Howard, I am 52-year-old Bahamian, and I say that we're having all these murders because of illegal immigrants, or the immigrants are the ones doing the murders. Uh, it's just not so. We need to, as Bahamians, for once, hold ourselves accountable for all the mess in this country, um, for a great deal of the mess. I don't know if it's all the mess. I don't know if it's all the mess. In March of uh, this year, for the first two weeks of March, we're going to have a conversation about corruption, right, and how corruption, uh, the cancer that continues to be able to erode our communities. We're going to talk about corruption. We're going to talk about perceived corruption. We're going to talk about small corruption. We're going to talk about taking bribes. We're going to talk about how this expands and how people see these things. We're going to talk. We're going to talk about corruption. We're going to bring in international pers- uh, persons. I am uh, reaching out to some persons who I've seen, done some TED Talks. We're going to see if we can be able to read people, reach people from um, uh, Kenya. We can see if we can be able to reach some people from Nigeria. This is where the corruption exists in these areas. We're going to talk about corruption and find out how we can do more introspection. Let me take this telephone call. Call you on the line with this live. Go ahead. Howard Jeff here. Good afternoon. What's up, Jeff? Listen, I, I can try to make this very short here. You know, um, I've heard the common comments of a few of the Texans talking about the undocumented migrants, the illegal migrants, and so on and so forth. We need to have uh, really a case study done to really prove or disprove that thing is what it is. You know, uh, it is a question that, I, that we asked before. We have many persons in this country who have changed their names to names that we term traditionally Bahamian names. However, the Bahamian people continue to get a black eye. Right now, as you see, we are number eight on the, on the list. But we don't really know, really, if you really want to be serious, who are these people committing these, these murders? And why is it that we can't identify the origins, if that, even if that's important? But it is important because Bahamians traditionally, as you know, we are peaceful, loving people. We don't do no, 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 no uh, big thing like uh, how I, I heard someone on a previous show talk about chopping up people and burning people and all that stuff. That's mm-hmm. not our way of life. Mm-hmm. We need someone to do an actual case study and find out the truth. I, I think that's the only way we're going to settle this. Thing. Mm-hmm. Thanks for taking my call. I appreciate your telephone call, Jeff. I really do. And uh, I want to kind of hit a couple of things as it relates to that. Um, statistical data and information is not for an external use. There's no one from an inter- uh, international standpoint will say uh, the Haitians in the Bahamas are committing unless that we create that narrative and sell that. This status and the information and even the information that comes from um, our Royal Bahamas police force has nothing to do with uh, birth, with ethnic- ethnicity, uh, and sort of the origin of these persons. They are dead on Bahamian soil. These people are dead on Bahamian soil. And I told you, the forerunner of the conversation is that these people are known to the police. The one who has been perpetrated, the victim and the suspect, are known to the police. That is, that is the forefront of the conversation. If there is any case study done, it'll be for our edification internally, for us to understand that we need to eradicate uh, the criminal element that exists in these shanty towns, that exists in these particular quadrants and regions within our own country. That'll be for us to do. That's our homework. But stats that comes out, that speaks about the Caribbean, that speaks about the Bahamas, that speaks about international spaces, will not differentiate 
and identify this is a Bahamian, this is a Haitian, this is a Jamaican in the Bahamas. That, it doesn't do that. It speaks to murder and criminality that exist here. So my point is, is that whilst we can do these things, we need really to be able to um, um, identify that. Let's go to our next telephone call. Call you on the line with this live. Go ahead. Good afternoon. How are you doing, man? I'm good, man. What's up? Awesome, man. It's, it's always a pleasure to, to hear from you. I appreciate you, my brother. All right. So basically, I wanted you to understand that uh, the correlation between crime and illegal, illegal immigration is more com complex than just saying that these persons are committing crimes. Mm -hmm. um, yes, you can look and see if persons or their children or their descendants are committing crimes, but you also have to look at the fact that uh, if illegal immigrants come to this country and they get jobs that our young men qualify for and can't get, our young men may be forced into a life of crime. And so while they are committing crimes, there may be a correlation be behind the fact that they're not getting the construction jobs. Mm -hmm. They're not getting certain other jobs that they would have gotten before, and it, it increases crime because persons who don't belong here excuse me, are getting those jobs. Mm -hmm. And so we have to look at this at a more complex, in a more complex way. Um, also, the children of these illegal immigrants, and we're only discussing illegal immigrants now, the children of the illegal immigrants, they are outsiders in the society, and so they end up without being able to get a, a, a driver's license, a bank account, uh, can't go to, to the college, uh, can't do certain things. Mm -hmm. And so some of them, not all, but some of them turn to a life of crime because they see themselves as outcasts in the society. Um, mm -hmm. Also, w w the, the illegal immigrants uh, see themselves as outcasts, so they build in shanty towns because they want to be in hiding. Mm -hmm. And those shanty towns are then used uh, uh, to hide drugs and guns and, and a lot of other Ill illicit activities that the police have discovered over the years. Mm -hmm. And uh, lastly, the, the network that is used to, to transport these same illegal immigrants is the same network that is used to, to transport the guns and drugs. You saw uh, the other day at Crooked Island, the bus in Crooked Island, the ship had a huge shipment of cocaine, and that was a ship that was bringing in illegal immigrants. Mm -hmm. And they're using it for both. Our guns are coming from Haiti, etc. And, uh, and so there is a correlation uh, between it. But even if there isn't, illegal immigrants don't belong here. Mm -hmm. And we have to do everything we can to make sure that whoever comes, they come the way they're supposed to come. So this is Lincoln Bain. I want to congratulate you on your show. I haven't had a chance to do so. But Bahamians have to, to stand up and, and make sure that we defend our borders. Lincoln, I appreciate your telephone call, my brother. Thank you so much for your contribution. And um, um, you really being able to chop it down at the way that people really need to be able to ingest it. So I thank you for your contribution. And um, I just want to say this. I mean, statistically, when we look at it, no matter how we look at it, no matter how the cat jump, when persons read about the Bahamas, the information won't differentiate, differentiate on the ground. There's no difference on the ground. So we still have to do more introspection to find out how we can police our community, how we can be able to get to the core, how we can be able to develop the things and move forward and make some things happen. Let's take a next telephone call. Call you on the line with this live. Go ahead. Yes, Mr. Howard. How are you doing? I'm good, man. What's up? Yeah, everything is all right. You know, uh, you know I, I don't know who the media thing they're fooling, right? Mm -hmm. But I like how, uh, what Jeff commented on and what Lincoln the, gave the chronology. Mm -hmm. I like to give another sequence of events. Mm -hmm. Firstly, you know, uh, you from Freeport, right? <laughs> Eight mile off. You, you, sorry, you don't live in the inner city, right? Mm -hmm. I used to walk from St. John's. I've been in the city all my life, right? Mm -hmm. I like to juxtapose Fox. Mm -hmm. Jeff brought up a very interesting uh, idea, I mean, uh, uh, situation, mm -hmm. right? And so what happens is now, Lincoln told you about the offsprings of the migrants, right? Mm -hmm. So, and listen to Mr. Pintar the other day. I agree with him. We should give a moratorium and give him work to miss patients and give other nationalities like Mexicans and other people uh, uh, work permits. Mm -hmm. What I'm saying is, I am much older than you, Howard. Mm -hmm. I knew I have Haitian friends from the 60s. I, I know about uh, the, 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 the exploitation of the Haitian laborer and the type of migrants where they be here. Mm -hmm. But I live in the inner city. I know all of these people, um, and some of them are Haitian women, and they are in a life of crime. Some of them go on the job sites, but I, 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 well, you, you know something, Howard? Try to get some primary school students in, from the inner city and ask them what's going on in the schools. I have a family member that goes to a government primary school. Uh, they told me that some of the children are, are wiping fecal matter on the walls, right? Mm -hmm. uh, 
just the, a couple of, just, just before the Christmas day, I saw a primary school guy run down another guy with a knife. A bus driver to intervene. You could go and look at see the social deterioration, even uh, forms of lesbianism is being displayed in primary schools. It's just is a different is a difference. There's a lot of things going on mm. uh, that you guys are not aware of. But I, th- I this is me. It's naive, mm-hmm. right? You cannot mm-hmm. juxtapose the, an influx of people with crime. It's just it's just it's just it's just pure. It's, it's asinine because mm-hmm. if you increase the population. Don't care what it is, and you have been increasing crime. You have to be able to juxtapose that. We must stop this garbage on the radio. You, you, mm-hmm. you, you guys don't see what's going on. Mm-hmm. Angleston, you have to, you have to be Angleston, careful. Angleston, hold on, please, man. I, I know you can cut me. Angleston, where I live, and the whole area to go over here. Mm-hmm. What I'm telling you, when you go in Angleston, you sometimes I don't even know the people are Asian women until I hear them on the job or they somebody they talking Asian women. What I'm saying is, it, it we we intermingle with them, so we are responsible for the crime too. Because some of them we go up, and some of them go over there, but they have a propensity because. Of the situation that Lincoln explained because of the alienation and the government not giving them their citizenship and making them feel alienated. And then you guys are being naive because you, did not, you, you guys are not understanding where is the narrative about us versus them, more of us than them. Now, I heard Mr. Mitchell the other day on the radio uh, accuse Mr. Bean of uh, threatening people. I thought Mr. Bean was warning people. He didn't give any death threats. And on top of that, why isn't, since it's, it's about national security, why isn't the government taking immigration more serious? And why is it that the Asian guy who gave a whole statement to Mama saying the Colombian necktie is more than them, why he mm-hmm. wasn't arrested for public threat or public terror or for facilitating uh, sedition or, or, or terrorism? Mm-hmm. Why? They, they, they always, they, you, get, you see preferential treatment for the migrants all over. The other day, you, they, they talk about, oh, this behemoth fellow and this Jamaican fellow robbed the liquor store. Why you don't set up an Asian behemoth robbed the liquor store? Why you don't call the surnames? No, people can go, the police know, you know. You can look at the surnames, you can look at the... You could look but that's what I'm saying to you. The, They're the contributing to crime and we right just sitting playing stupid. Mm-hmm. They have a high drop school drop drop on rate too. Some of them do good. All is not would be Asian but smart and beaming. Every time you have a conversation with one of them, I let them know that's BS. Everybody's smart. If you be me, stop these narratives, be him and lazy. This is all our fault. Because of the narratives? But, but you mean you but, but, well, you know powerful words are words. Of course. You know powerful words. What, why do you think the songs are affecting people? Every young fool right now we playing this about garbage, this. these rock music all over the place. Yeah. They're shooting and killing one another. You can't see they benefiting from it. Yeah. You have to juxtapose these things. We have eyes to see, man. Bless up. I appreciate you, my brother. Um, um, but I just wanted more clarity from you. Um, uh, what is the media perpetuating? Are we perpetuating the idea that this doesn't exist? Should we just uh, reject the idea that, uh, you know, when persons call into the show and say that we're seeing a lot of Haitians or we're seeing a lot of illegal immigrants cause these issues, how can, we, how can I justify that? How can I say that? Has the statistic, that's all I'm saying. When I say that I'm trying to be decent, my decency comes from the core of statistical data and information that I can be able to show as a representation that exists there. Where is it written to say that there are X amount of Haitians or X amount of Haitian Bahamians have been murdered or have been involved in these crimes? All this is, is your proximity to a community that says, I know them. I could see them. I know these particular, but that story doesn't come out in the paper. That's all I'm saying. That's all I'm saying. And you cannot expect me in my capacity who could be sued as an individual and sue the organization for me to be able to do it. I can't do that. I only can tell you, based upon this, there needs to be another study done. And what is the other study? The other story, study has to be, who are, where's the origin of these particular things? I'm telling you, the police comes out and said that these criminals are known to the police. Who are the criminals? Who are these particular people? That's all I'm saying. If there is clarity, if there is statistical data and information, if there is a clear segregation or separation between the two, then we as a society can identify this as, okay, we recognize this as an issue. And maybe, maybe this could be able to justify our our intensity in separating uh, ourselves from them. And not just 600 people going over. We send 6,000 people a month. We could justify that. But this can't be justification by this feel. Oh, I feel like I know them because I live close to them and I could know who these persons are. Let's just talk with it. Let's just be very clear about this. I have a responsibility in this particular position and I can't be loose with that. Let's take a next caller before we get out of here. Call you on the line. We got 30 seconds. Go ahead. Yes, Robert. Hey, what's up, my brother? Pretty good. Um, the three gentlemen, they was right on at one point. And um, I think the... We say Haitian because we see a lot of them, okay. and they take up they take up most of our space. Okay. 
okay? Mm -hmm. And type file and then it become crime ridden when a lot of those immigrants went down there. I could agree we, with you. We even didn't know type file was around. I could agree with you. I could tell you. And, and, and furthermore, I think what happened in new, the persons who do in the talk show need to do some investigation before they come out, mm -hmm. come out with these stories. Mm -hmm. Because if you're not fully knowledgeable about the stories, mm -hmm. you're not going to appreciate mm -hmm. something. Mm -hmm. When I hear you talking about going to Africa to talk about corruption, now you could call in a couple of people right here. And they can sit down with you even if you don't want to put them on the radio. Mm -hmm. And you learn some things about this thing, the hammers, mm -hmm. and make you put your hand on your head and cry. Mm -hmm. So don't never think you have to go overseas to talk about corruption. No, no. That's why the foreigners... Do you yeah, think, watch me, do you think uh -huh. that the local people are willing to have a conversation on <laughs> air about the corruption that exists in the community that they live? That's if why I go on overseas. Some, some people, if you give them a chance, they'll come out and tell Text you. Text me that and number then, and we can I, have a conversation with them. I guarantee. No, no, I'm serious. I, if they are willing to have a conversation, because I, I haven't tell, found let, them. Let me tell you something. I'm 64 years old. Okay. The things I know, I could write a book and be the bestseller in the world. I believe you. Always remember that. I can believe I can you. Tell you. I've been around. I can believe That's you. That's why I tell you, the normal fella out there on the street who knows that street and knows what's happening, you'll be surprised. You can't be a talk show host and don't go out there and do some investigation mm -hmm. before you come on the radio to mm -hmm. speak. So when these people speak, they're speaking from knowledge, knowledge. Mm -hmm. Not what they believe, from knowledge. Okay. Okay, my brother. So, so as I, I use it, as well, I've been around, and I, I know your family very well. So, yes, do do some investigation before you get on the radio and get up in some things. Because when you hear things, you you want to be fully ready. After. Now, now, if you're talking about what we said as it relates to what's going to happen in March of this year. In terms of corruption, when I said that I would talk to some people externally about how they dealt with corruption in their country, I do believe that there are people locally that can speak to corruption. However, what I've done investigation on over my little short couple of years here on the earth and being able to get in this space is talking to men and women who lack the propensity, lack the testicular fortitude to stand up and, you know what they tell me? Well, how would I going to write that book? And when I die, I want them to be able to put it out there and publish it. But you, you had Mr. Roko on the other day. Mr. Roko was very said, transparent. Okay. But and even, me, watch me. Hold on. Him too, you know. Hold on, watch it's me. More him. Watch me. Even mm -hmm. Mr. Roko would say to me, no, how would I going to put all of this out there? Talk to me, because there are conversations that we have on the outside that are conversations that are not for the air. But if we're going to air out some things, we're going to have people who is able to deal with that. And for the most part, everybody ain't want to talk on the radio. When, when the women hear things, they don't be surprised. Believe me. Because we see it every day. We hear it every day. All right? But, I appreciate um, it, though. Like, like I say, we, we, the, the news people, and I find out, all the talk show hosts on Morning Blend and the rest of them come right up. They're not fully engaged in the over the hill people. You mm -hmm. see, they seem like they are people who live in the uh, suburb area. Mm -hmm. Because when they hear somebody get killed, they be, oh, what's up? No, that not happen in the country. We know it happened in the country because we hear mm -hmm. somebody, somebody threaten somebody. You know what they say? Oh, it's because somebody. But we hear threats. Every day, because we live in the community, the police went out to the jail to put the people in. Mm. Believe me. Mm -hmm. All right? I appreciate anyway, the telephone you call. The one, okay? Thank you, man. You did a very good job. I appreciate your telephone call. I like these provocation. I like these kind of conversations that push people to, to speak, people who wouldn't call on a regular basis. Because you're thinking about these things, and if they're lingering in your mind and your spirit, let's talk about it. But whilst to, to, to the gentleman's point, the fact of the matter is I, I respect your position. In fact, I look for men like you to find out more about the country. But the first, the preamble to the conversation that I talk to people with, and you know who you are. You all know who you are. The first thing you say to Howard Grant, now look here, don't say this on the radio, eh? Uh, don't call my name, eh? Talk to me. Don't start, listen, in the newspaper, to the letter, to the editor, you all don't put your name. 
Ah, you got all the answers in the world, but you wouldn't stand behind it. You wouldn't stand strong and say, I say so. But you want me to say, oh, I, I got to look for people all over the world to have a conversation on how we could rectify an issue in our community because you wouldn't stand up. I right here, every Jesus day God sent from 12 o'clock to 2 o'clock, let's talk. But if you don't want to talk, I got to find people to how we can rectify this issue and get back to the foundation of community, to get back to the injection of hope of who we are as a people. Don't do that. Don't throw us under the bus. We deal with facts. We deal with statistical data and information that we could put in black and white and give it to the Bahamian people. The first thing I'll tell you, I ain't going to talk about it if it ain't got no facts because you can sue me. So let's just be very clear about that. I thank you all, man. This is the um, uh, Friday show. Uh, you know, it we'll always end on a high note. And I thank you for it. Next week, we're going to have a good conversation about love and laughter and an opportunity to be able to find out how we can get back to the core of how things got. In this month of love, in this Black History Month, we're going to be able to do those things. I want to thank all those persons who can be able to tune into the show. Um, uh, that's right, Howard. Stand firm. Uh, just a lot of hate speech. Uh, these some texts are coming too. Uh, so it says, even some gays are known by them. I don't know what that means. Okay. Um, um, so this is a lot. I can't read all these things, guys. I thank you so very kindly for being able to be a part of the conversation. Enjoy your weekend. Have a great time. Go out there, get some Kong salad. Don't be afraid to travail the city. Keep yourself safe. Uh, ensure that you can be able to enjoy and start to be able to participate in economic activity again to see our country move forward. Let's find a way to get back to community. Let's find a way to inject a true sense of hope so we could grow this country and sell Celebrate truly the jubilee of what we're supposed to be celebrating in this year of independence. Guy, that's the show today. I thank you so very kindly. Uh, the Foundation with Howard Grant. We're going to be back on Monday. God spare. I hope that you have a good weekend. Enjoy yourselves. And we'll see you back here on Monday. Stick and stay for Z Live with Chivago Lang right after this. Play this coming, give up the jumping.